بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد وأرض عن الخلفاء الراشدين ومن تبع من أحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise and thanks is for Allah the Most High and I ask Allah to send his salutations and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds on till the day of resurrection. Now, in our third lesson of the importance, the important lessons for the Muslim of the Ummah by a Sheikh bin Baz, may Allah have mercy upon him. We're in the ninth lesson. And the ninth, the eighth lesson, sorry, is regarding the obligations of prior. Now, these are things that you have to say or do while in salah. Now, let's start. They are eight. So, let's start. Number one is saying the various statements of takbir. Takbir al takbir. This is excluding the takbir al ihram. So when you first give the takbir, the first takbir you give at the beginning of salah, it's called takbir al ihram. And every other salah, every other takbir is considered the takbir that we're speaking about, which are compulsory for the person who is praying to say. Now the second thing is saying sami Allah liman hamida. And this is for the Imam who is leading the prayer to say, and also for the person who is praying individually by himself. Okay? The third thing is saying, Rabbana walaka alhamd. Now, this statement is said after you rise from Rukur. So, after the Imam says, Sami Allahu liman hamida, the Imam and also the person who is praying individual salah, he should say Rabbana walaka alhamd and also behind him. Rahman. So let's go again. When the Imam says Sami Allah liman hamida, this statement should be say by, said by the Imam. And when he rises up, the musalla, the musalli, the person that's praying behind the Imam should say Rabbana walaka alhamd. Now when the person is praying individually, he should say Sami Allah liman hamida, then Rabbana walaka alhamd. Now the third thing is saying the third the third thing which is Rabbana walaka alhamd is for is for everyone. The fourth thing is the fourth thing is saying Rab Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Now this is said in the bowing pos position when the person prays. So when he bows, he says, Rabbana. When he bows, he says, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. The fifth is saying, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. And this is when the person or the, the person that's praying is in the position of prostration. So when his forehead is on the floor, he should say, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. The sixth is saying, Rabbi Firli. And this means, O oh Allah, please forgive me. And this is said between the two sujoods. So whenever you raise your head from the sujood and you sit, you should say, Rabbi Firli. Then you should prostrate after that again. And the seventh is saying the tashahud, the first part of the tashahud. And the eighth is sitting for the tashahud. Now these are all the eighth obligations of the prior now let's go to the ninth lesson and this entails the explanation of the shahud and i think that we are all familiar with the statements of the shahud but nonetheless i'll go through it now now when you're in the shahud the first part of the shahud you should say this 
التحيات لله والصلاة والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام على عبادك الصالحين عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده والرسول What does this mean in English? Greetings, prayers, and pure things belong to Allah, the Most High. Peace be upon all upon you, O Muhammad, and the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Peace be upon all and and on His righteous servants. Allah's righteous servants of Allah. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Then it's for the person that's performing the Salat to send salutation and blessings up on Prophet Muhammad وسلم, by saying, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama salayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. وبارك على محمد وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. What does this mean? Oh Allah, exalt Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you has as you have exalted Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Verily, you are the most praised and the most glorious, and bless Muhammad. And the family of Muhammad, as you did bless Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, verily you are the most praised and the most glorious. After that, it's rec highly recommended that the person seeks refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave, the hellfire, the trials in this life, and the trials of the Ad-Dajjal. So it's up on the Muslim, it's up on the person that's praying after he gives salutation and blessings up on the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he should utmostly try his best to say and seek refuge with Allah from these four aspects of trials. After that, he may supplicate and ask Allah for anything that he wishes. Here it's recommended to use and never neglect the du'as of the Prophet وسلم, at this point in his salah. As the Prophet وسلم, has narrated, one of the du'as that you can make at this point after the salutation is, say, is to say, and this is the English version, O oh Allah, help me to perform your remembrance. Show gratitude and allow me to worship you in the good way. O oh Allah, I have oppressed myself with severe oppression and there is none other than you who forgives sins. So forgive me of my, forgive me with forgiveness from you and grant me your mercy. You are the all merciful and utmost ut forgiving. As for the first tashahud, one should stand after saying the two statement of tashahud to the third raka'ah in duha, in, in duhur. So after the person says the first part of tashahud in salatul dhuhr, he should stand up for the third raka'ah. This is also done in salatul asr too and in salatul maghrib and also salatul isha. So after completing the first tashahud, after sitting, he should stand up in the third or the fourth, respectively, of the salat the person is engaged in. Now, let's move on. Now, we'll go to the tenth lesson for the day. And these are actions that are recommended throughout the salat. Now, pre previously, we spoke about the pillars that you have to do. And if not, this will make your salat nullified. Then we spoke about the obligations, things that you, you should do in order to get the full rewards. And if you don't do it, your salat is of a lower decree, decree or degree. And now let's go to the 10th, which is related to the 
recommended actions that you do within the Salah when praying. Now there are about 16 and I'll try to go through as many as possible in this sitting. The first is the opening supplication and we, we say it al istiftah. The second is placing one's right hand over the left on the chest when praying. So we say Allahu Akbar, takbiratul ihram. Then we put or left, then or right, like this, on the chest, as some scholars have said. The second is, the third is, sorry, raising the hands to the level of the shoulder or the level of the ears and keeping all fingers closed while doing this action. So we say Allahu Akbar to, the, to this level, according to the narration, or to the lower part of the air. And we close all the fingers while doing this action. Okay? Now let's go to the, the fourth thing. The statement of glorification after the first in both Ruku and Sujood. Now whenever you do a supplication, whenever, whether Ruku or Sujood, it's compulsory that you do it at least once. So when you're in Ruku, you say, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Now, it's compulsory for you to say it at least once. If you do more, it's recommended. When you're in sujood, it's the same thing. When you're prostrated, when you say, Subhana Rabbi al -A'la, it's compulsory for you to say one. Anything more than that is recommended in order to get more adjurate. More reward from your Lord, the Most High. Now, let's go. Anything increasing. Now, when we go, let's go to the fifth point of recommendations. When you get, uh, when you move from a ruku to the standing straight, straight in your back, and you say, "Rabbana wa hamd." Anything that's more than this is recommended. So after the Imam says, "Sami Allahu liman hamida." Then you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. There are various supplications that you can increase in this position while standing. And this is recommended. Now let's go to the sixth. Making the hands, making the head and the back on one level during rakur. Meaning, when you have rakur, your head and your back should be straight. It's narrated from some of the companions that the Prophet ﷺ would pray his head will be his head will be straight and it would be possible for someone to put a cup of glass on his back and it stays in that form it's not tilted or it's not you know it doesn't move in these days and time may Allah give us a good understanding of religion I've seen a lot of the strange things throughout this Muslim communities where when they make rukur they're like halfway through Wakur. Their back is bent, which is a complete opposite of what the Prophet ﷺ has done and has encouraged us to do. Why don't we try our best to be like Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? Why don't we try to fight and work and push our desires in the coordinates of Islam? Especially in Salah. And another thing. When I've seen that in this time and age, many of our young Muslims, they're rushing. They're rushing, for, rushing through all their prayers. Come on. Allah the Most High, the, the Lord of everything, has blessed us with health, health, money, looks, everything that we have. Why not be grateful to Him and pray? Pray in a tranquil way. Relax while praying, not rushing not doing half the salat that we should be doing. Anyway, let's move on to another, the seventh step. Now, the seventh is of the recommendation, distance between the arms from the side of the body and the abdomen from the thigh and, and the thigh from the chin during the sujood. So when you prostrate, you should try to make your hands away from your abdomen like this when your face is on the floor your feet should be together, and so forth. The eighth is raising the arm from the floor while pers producing or um, pers uh, prostrating. Many people, 
throughout my life have seen, or some people, I wouldn't say many, some people, when they prostrate, yes, their forehead and their nose are on the floor, and their forearm is on the floor like this. We should not do this while praying. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged us not to do this. Or can I call him So when we pray, our hand should be above like up like this, not on the floor, on the floor like this, where we prostrate like a dog. Now let's move on to the ninth. Now in the ninth ninth recommendation, it's for the person to sit on his left foot and to erect the right. And this is in the second raka. In the fourth, it's a different position. And we call it warruk. It's when you put the left under the right and you sit on your buttocks. The tenth is al takbir al takbir at warruk, which we just sent, we spoke about. The eleventh is pointing the index finger while doing the tashahud, especially when giving saying la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah in the first tashahud the 12th is sending salutation on the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his fa family as well as ibrahim in uh, in the first tashahud the 13th is a supplication in the last tashahud the 14th is re re reciting aloud during the prayers of fajr Aisha, Maghrib. These are all sunnahs that you should recite aloud. And even istisqa and Eid. These are all sunnahs you should recite aloud after reading Al-Fatiha. And reciting quietly in the Salat of Dhuhr, Asr, and the last Raka'ah of Maghrib. These are all sunnahs that's recommended that you should do. And so forth. And the last reciting another passage from the Quran other than Surah Al-Fatiha in any of the in any of the first two rakats of the salah. So if you're doing Fajr, you do Surah Al Fatiha, then you do any other um, surah from the Quran. In Dhuhr, you do Fatiha and any other surah in the Quran. And for the other two of Dhuhr, you do only Fatiha, then you prostrate with the Imam. Or you do Ruku, sorry, you do Ruku with the Imam. And so forth. And it's recommended that you try to implement all these recommended actions in your prayer in order to get the full rewards. And in some narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that you will have a person that will, you know, will only be getting half the reward of the salat, full reward of the salat, half the reward of the salat. And it decreed, it decreases in degree according to what the person does in his salat. So if we do what the Prophet has encouraged us to do, we'll get referral reward. We relax and so forth. But anyway, stick with us for our next sitting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.